Episode 328, Honored Guest. Aiden didn't just call Nathan Harris because he was the director of the FBI. Instead, he vaguely remembered hearing that Director Harris and Brenda had grown up together. In that case, he should also know and like Lena, right? If Aiden could let Director Harris deal with Lena, it would save him a lot of trouble. I heard you moved to Arkland City, Harris said after their initial greetings. It's a beautiful place with beautiful scenery. Beautiful women too, eh, kid? After an awkward moment, he coughed. So, what did you need? You haven't said why you called. Aiden shook his head with a smile and filled Director Harris in. After listening to his explanation, Harris took a long pause. Then, finally, he said, I think this will be rather simple. I'm going to give you an address, and you need to go find him. Find who? Outside an expensive townhouse complex in the housing district, Aiden got out of the White Knight with the address provided by Director Harris written on a scrap of paper in his hand. He walked up to the enormous gate of the complex. Are you a resident or a visitor? A security guard in a black uniform eyed Aiden from his guard booth. Aiden smiled pleasantly. Sir, I'm looking for the Larson residence in building number three. However, the security guard sneered, pointed to the distance and said, Didn't you see that huge queue of people? They're all looking for Jonathan Larson. Go to the back of the line. Aiden suddenly remembered how he knew the name Larson. Jonathan Larson was Arkland City's famous former police chief. He had been known in his time as chief for preserving a staggeringly low crime rate in the city, treating criminals and cases with toughness as well as fairness. Aiden tilted his head. Director Harris hadn't said that the Larson's grandfather was THE Jonathan Larson, but Aiden had a growing suspicion. His eyes went in the direction that the security guard indicated and found that there was indeed a long line of people outside one building. If he were to wait in line, he might not get to see Larson until it was dark. To avoid that fate, Aiden dialed the phone number that Director Harris had left him. After saying a few words, Aiden handed his mobile phone to the security guard and said coolly, It's for you. The security guard looked at Aiden suspiciously but took the phone and put it to his ear. Martin, Mr. Dale is my honored guest. Let him in at once. The familiar voice from the other end of the phone fell like a hammer on the security guard's head. His hands shook so hard Aiden's phone almost flew out of them. After a moment, the security guard waved his hands apologetically to Aiden. Sir, I'm so sorry. This was my mistake. Please forgive me. Then he quickly opened the entrance gate and invited Aiden in. As Aiden walked in, those in line began to complain. Why does he get to go first? That's right, we've been in line all morning. How can we let someone who cuts in line go first? Someone grab him and drag him to the back of the line where he belongs. In the face of the turbulent crowd, Barton, the security guard, roared with the strength of a lion. Everyone, shut up! This is a distinguished guest invited inside personally by Mr. Larson. Can you say the same? Hearing these words, the clamor stopped. There was envy on everyone's faces, but no one spoke again. After entering the building, Aiden finally met Larson himself. Larson looked to be about 60 or 70, and his white hair was meticulously combed. He had a straight back and a strong figure, without the slightest indication of senility. Hello there, he said. Come and sit, Mr. Dale. Larson had no self-importance about him, even though he was a highly sought-after man in the city. He kindly invited Aiden into his office, personally brought him a cup of steaming hot coffee, and looked after him with a smile. While they were drinking their coffees, they gradually turned to the topic of Lena. From Larson's demeanor, Aiden could tell that he was a man of integrity, and, although he was retired, he still had a profound insight into criminal justice that impacted the present day. What's more, Aiden's knowledge base meant that he far outmatched ordinary people's understanding of the world. He often spoke with intelligence well beyond his years, but that just excited Larson and caused him to ask many questions. For a while, the old man chatted to his young visitor quite pleasantly. Insightful and engaging conversation. Communication plus one. Now, son, what's the relationship between yourself and my dear Nathan? Mr. Larson asked. It's been a long time since I heard Nate boasting to such an extent about a person over the phone. Nathan, of course, was Harris's first name. Aiden hadn't even tried to direct the flow of conversation. It had naturally moved over to Harris. Aiden gave a slight smile. We're good acquaintances. I'm sure he cares for you much more than a mere acquaintance would, don't you agree? Larson showed a meaningful smile. As he considered this point, 
Aiden remembered that Director Harris had mentioned several times that he thought Aiden would do well in the FBI, and if he ever decided to join, he would be happy to take him on as a mentee. After he heard that Aiden was teaching Dovlar how to fight properly, he seemed even more desperate to hire Aiden full-time, but teaching Dovlar had already occupied a lot of Aiden's time. He had no leisure to accept a job at the FBI as an apprentice. Therefore, every time Harris asked, Aiden refused. But Aiden could not have told Larson about these things. Instead, he just gave a little laugh in answer to Larson's question. The two continued chatting for a while, until Aiden finally found a good place to lead the discussion to Lena and Lincoln's case. Larson heard Aiden explain the whole case once, but his only response was to shake his head and laugh wryly. You came to the wrong person, I'm afraid. I'm sure you've encountered how difficult Lena can be by now. Looking at Larson's heartbroken expression saying this, Aiden couldn't help but venture a guess. Mr. Larson, what's your relationship toward Lena? Just as I'm sure you already suspect, Larson said, nodding with a smile. I'm her grandfather. I see. It all made sense now. No wonder Director Harris told him about Larson. But in that case, why did Larson say that he found the wrong person? You don't understand, Larson explained. Brenda and Lena... Those two girls have been set in their own ways since they graduated from the police academy. I don't have much I can say to sway either of them unless they wanted to be swayed. Aiden sighed in distress. Would it really come to this? Would he really have to disturb Wiles on Lincoln's behalf? But just then, Larson's face twisted into a mysterious smile. In fact, to resolve this matter, you don't have to go through Lena at all. When he saw the confident look on Larson's face... Aiden couldn't help but ask the question that was weighing on his heart. So what would you suggest I do instead? Larson tugged at his beard, and his eyes flashed with an ageless wisdom. I haven't worked at the police department for many years, it's true, but I still have some experience in handling cases. It was true that the old man had been retired for a long time, but the fire in his eyes was not overcome by the wrinkles on his face. Larson stood up, walked a few steps, and said leisurely, the fate of your friend Lincoln doesn't rely on Lena at all, but on two other people. And who would they be?